And when you think of your digital experience, right, we're talking about um, employee experience around collaboration, that needs to be all encompassing. It needs to be as important to think about, if not more so, before and after the meeting, as much as uh, having better meetings themselves. To Lead is a remote first company based out of Canada. What makes a world class Microsoft 365 internet and digital workplace? There's a bunch of things that are also happening today. Anywhere, anytime collaboration is enabled uh, in most organizations that you have Microsoft 365 and who've rolled it out correctly. It truly is uh, something that's a promise that's been realized. Um, however, we, as we mentioned earlier, we want to collaborate more. We need to collaborate more, yet uh, a lot of our collaboration time feels unproductive, especially meetings. Meetings are really bad for this. And so my highlight here would be to think about meetings, not as during the meeting, like how is the meeting conducted there, but think about what happens before the meeting and after the meeting. We know that meetings are overused. A lot of times we throw a meeting at a problem to solve it when uh, another form of collaboration like file collaboration or you know sequential collaboration where we're working, um, you know, um, where you're messaging me and I'm working on a file, putting comments in it, and you're working on that or co-editing at the same time and co-authoring where we have a meeting, but now the meeting's focused more on the co-authoring experience. Those are all ways to potentially improve meeting outcomes. Um, at the same time, if meetings aren't, you know, before the meeting, if the collaboration is not occurring before the meeting, then the meeting itself often is, uh, starting on the back foot. You start the meeting and you, you know not everyone's on the same page. There's all sorts of gaps there. So the more we can collaborate before the meeting, the more effective the meeting can be. The more we collaborate after the meeting, the same thing, right? The action items that come out of the meeting. A lot of people don't need to be in the meeting. They can just go and look at the transcript and the recording and zip through it much quicker to get the insights they need and to take the actions they need. And so what we find is when people say like, I love Zoom and we're using Zoom. Um, I'm not trying to pick on Zoom, but just using it as an example. It has a great meeting experience, just like Teams can have. Have, but it really doesn't have that before the meeting and after the meeting experience. And when you think of your digital experience, right, we're talking about um, employee experience around collaboration, that needs to be all encompassing. It needs to be as important to think about, if not more so, before and after the meeting as much as uh, having better meetings themselves. So certainly there's more we can do there. Another thing you can do is you can look at insights um, by the tool nowadays that actually tells you that. So this is an uh, example of Viva Insights or My Analytics, where I see insights for me. So I'll, I'll tell you guys, one of my mistakes that I make a lot of times is I don't RSVP to meetings. Um, I'm really bad at that. And so, uh, you know, I'm a RSVP anonymous, right? I'm really bad because people don't know if I'm gonna attend a meeting till the last minute. Um, and so I've been using the metrics where it tells me that to improve, right? Okay, I'm at 20% of the meetings that I get, I don't respond to. Now I'm at 10%, etc. cetera. And it's something I have to constantly work at. Like if I leave it for a month, I promise I'm not great at responding again. So, because I get a lot of meetings. And so this is something that I need to do a better job of. That's an example of a personal insight around meetings that helps us be more productive. The technology today provides this free of cost. It's core built into the product in a number of different ways, these kinds of insights. Now there's other things that we could pay a premium and we can invest in for our team. So our broader uh, group work group, I might notice that um, our uh, time in meetings are typically larger meetings with more people. So uh, there, there are more people typically is a less efficient meeting. And if we know they're long meetings, again, that's a pretty good indicator of a problem area. Now that may be situational. Maybe there's times in the year where we have more of these. Think of like fiscal planning, but this is something where I can really dig into the data and I can inspect it at a working group level, right, at a team level. And so this becomes very, very helpful and, and valuable insight that improves meeting uh, outcomes. That's not limited to just the we areas. I'll show other examples of the all of us uh, or us areas. So here's another pattern that we've found problem. And this is very true with the uh, great sort of resignation and the reshuffling that we've had with hybrid work. Um, people have more burnout, right? Because um, the boundaries of work, especially when we're remote and hybrid, are uh, are more porous and there's more ways that our work can get to us and uh, distract us and, and other things like that. So um, how do we potentially manage that? Well, one way that we've seen uh, you know some success is uh, where we get a bit smarter after you send the message, right? If you've ever sent an email, you get a little bit smarter. So what's happening at the top of this one is it's saying, hey, maybe Maybe before you send this message, you should delay the send of this message. I think it's a good idea to delay the send because this person's, you know, time zone is different than yours. This might not even be like a an employee, like I might not be working after hours. They might just be different time zones, right? So, you know, this is all the kinds of considerations we need to do. That's an individual example. Another individual example is I'm taking time off. And so how do I make sure I'm proactively coordinating my responses to meetings and follow-ups and things like that before I take that time off? How can the tool actually help me with that by saying these are the 
the ones that are in conflict of the time you're about to say you're out of office, you know, you haven't responded to these. Do you want to do that while you're marking your out of office time? Things like that. So the technology will continue to evolve and innovate and improve these at a personal level, but it's not limited to that. As we mentioned before, the we level can also be tackled. So looking at, you know, where is the after hours collaboration occurring and how is it being broken down, right? Um, we can even do that at a larger scale level. This is um, an organization where at a team level, we're looking at, you know, what kind of after hours collaboration is happening? Is it meetings, which are much more disruptive? Or is it just instant messages and things like that? And so maybe this would change, you know, how we tackle and approach this from a leadership perspective or a manager perspective. Um, and then you also see examples here at the organizational level, like how is the distribution of after hours collaboration work? And I'll share more about this in the employee management discussion to later today. But this is certainly all kind of data sets that we now have access to with, uh, you know, a very minimal investment of something called Viva Insights that allows us to potentially um, improve outcomes around collaboration. So those are a few quick examples examples of, you know, taking collaboration further and how the employee experience around collaboration could be improved.